A. A. Allen Revivals Incorporated, Miracle Valley, Arizona presents Miracles Today. What you're going to hear next is a supernatural utterance, God speaking through the gift of prophecy. For lo, as I make myself known to my servant, uh, and work mightily through him, uh, I am in thy midst this night, uh, and I shall be known, uh, and thou shalt rejoice over my power, for it shall descend upon thee uh, in waves upon thy soul, uh, and thou shalt feel the rain uh, as it shall fall in drops upon thee, uh, and thou shalt see me, uh, yea, even as my servant does stand, uh, and as they do come before me, uh, and as I do lend my shadow, yea, mine own shadow, unto that of my servants, uh, and they do come before me this night, thou shalt know that I, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jireh, the Lord God omnipotent, art in thy midst, uh, and ready to do a mighty thing in this day and hour, if thou shalt only believe and loose thy faith, that I may work in thy midst. Raise your hands, everybody, and say yes to God. Say yes to God. Yes. Come on, let's rejoice in the Lord. Oh, he's so wonderful. He's so real. Listen, what you've just heard, According to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, it's a supernatural gift of utterance. The Bible said to one, to one, he divided the one gift, another, another gift, to one, the gift of miracles, to another, the gift of healing, to another, the gift of tongues, to another, the gift of interpretation, to another, the gift of miracles, to another, the gift of prophecy. Paul also says, despise not prophesying. All the way through the Bible, God has always had apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Five ministry gifts. Many churches and denominations and groups have eliminated the prophet, the apostle, the God-given anointed teacher. They still have Sunday school teachers painted up Jezebels that know nothing about holiness, neither the Word of God. And many denominations have now done away with the evangelist. They have the pastor left. But we're glad to report to you that there are five ministry gifts according to the Bible. How many believe the Bible? Yes. You believe it? Shout yes. yes. How many believe this? Yes. Read it out loud, the first word. Bible. I want every one of you listen to me. Read this. Holy Bible. Say it again. Holy Bible. Do you believe it? Yes. The Bible says that there are five ministry gifts in the church. And what I have just heard, and I have paid a special attention to it, God says that tonight his shadow is going to heal the sick that it shall not be the shadow of a man, but it shall be my shadow. Let me read your verse of scripture. The moment I heard it, I said, now, Lord, where is that scripture found? And I began to flip through my Bible. The cameras went off of me on her, and they didn't see me running. Here it is, 2 Corinthians 6. What agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple, that means me, it means you. Every one of you, you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I, that's God, I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And I shall be their God, and they shall be my people. God said he's dwelling in me, that he is walking in me. Is that right? Yeah. Brother Rogers, greatest song leader in the world, God is dwelling in him and walking in him. Brother Gray, the dean of our Bible school, God dwells in him and walks in him. <laughs> Say yes. Wait a minute. Stand there. You are making a shadow. Do you see it on the organ? I believe that since Jesus dwells in you and walks in you, I see I'm making one. This shadow, according to the scripture, 
can heal the sick. Do you? Shout amen, everybody. Yes? That's a, oh, I feel like shouting. Amen? Listen to this. Get ready to sing in just a moment. Let me read something from the Bible. From the top verse of the fifth chapter of Acts. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. What were they? Verse 15. Inasmuch as they, that is all the believers, brought forth the sick into the streets, laid them on beds and upon couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Did it happen? Yes. Did it happen in Bible days? Yes. And what happened? The shadow of a man brought to pass mighty signs and wonders and miracles as it overcast the sick and the suffering, the dying, that had been brought into the streets and lined up and down the sidewalks of Jerusalem. And listen. For there came also a multitude, this is the 16th verse, out of the cities round about in Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, them which were vexed, listen, B-E-X-E-D, vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. How many? How many? Everyone. Then every person that was vexed, with an unclean spirit, were healed, how? By the shadow of a man. Jesus laid hands on people and commanded demon spirits to come out. But Peter was doing something that Jesus has never done. There is not one record that Jesus ever sent forth handkerchiefs and aprons to heal the sick. Push me that chest down here, please, and just open it up and leave it down here on the side. Here are thousands of little miniature handkerchiefs during this camp meeting, through a times of fasting and prayer. Thousands. What are these? These are miniature handkerchiefs. And at midnight tonight, Brother Samuel, Samuel Nix will be in charge of the all-night prayer meeting. People will lay their hands on these little claws after seasons of fasting and prayer. And according to the 19th chapter of Acts, verse 11 and 12, in five days, a bit of cloth healed the sick and drove out devils. Jesus, according to the scripture, according to the record, did never resort to such a method to heal the sick. Amen. But it worked because God said, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Amen. Jesus, as far as the record is concerned, I find no place where he ever lined the sick and the suffering, the dying up, and declared that his shadow over casting them would heal them. But in the fifth chapter of Acts, Peter said, I'm not laying hands on anyone. I'm not anointing with all, but I decree. The word decree means to make up your mind, to decide a thing. One of the eternal purposes of God whereby events are foretold. And he decreed that as he marched past, you see that shadow on the pulpit? You see that shadow? Roll me that woman on that stretcher right here. Put her right in front of the pulpit. That when my shadow overcasts this woman, that God is going to raise her up. This woman was given up by medical science to die in September 1965. Almost two years ago, she's supposed to have been dead for two years. Two operations from head to toes, helplessly, despondent, oppressed, possessed by a tormenting cancer. How many believe God will do it? Amen. Oh, God. Oh, get ready, lady, in the next wheelchair. Leave her there a moment. Her husband's brought x-rays to prove her condition. She's been in an automobile accident. And the injury to her back has left her in this horrible shape. And the next little woman, forgive me, will you, if I cry? It's time that somebody weeps. Jesus wept. And I believe 
that when preachers once more can weep. I said I believe that when the ministry once more gets under the load until it can weep, because the Bible said he had compassion on the multitudes, they'll have no problem bringing deliverance to the mentally sick, the oppressed, the sick, the diseased, and the afflicted. Oh, God. That third woman, arthritis in all of her joints, hasn't walked for 20 years. But God's going to heal her tonight. Here's Brother David Davis at the Hammond organ. Brother David Mangum at the drums. Richard Page at the Steinway. My Lord, let's play me some. Glory, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> this week, Sounds of Revival recorded live in these great meetings. Address your request for this great disc to the Allen Revival telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Now, if you like cold, dead, dry church music, don't write for this. But if you like something with spirit, Sounds of Revival write for this. I feel better. shout yes. yes. Now listen, quickly. God is going to do a marvelous thing here, and I have much, I have very little time to preach. But have you noticed the Bible says that there came a multitude of sick folk around about Jerusalem bringing sick folk 
them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Now, Webster says that the word vexed means to be troubled, disturbed, agitated, afflicted physically or mentally or both. Sitting in this row of chairs over here are people that are vexed with unclean spirits. Whether they're demon-possessed or merely oppressed, we'll find out later. And I as yet haven't even made a decision. But the word vax means to be troubled, to be agitated, to be disturbed by a spirit that does not come from God. And God is going to set every one of the people in this row free tonight. This little lady come all the way from, Tran uh, from Canada. She's had this condition for two years, but now it's getting worse. She lives on tranquilizers. She's disturbed, agitated, troubled by a demon that says, you might as well commit suicide, quit living. Life is not worth living. This man sees demons, spirits, and serpents. He hears them as they talk. He is tormented day and night. But God called him to preach, and he backslid. Come here. Bow your head, brother, and start praying now. Ask God to save you. This man has a slip disc in his back. And even when he's sitting, generally he can't even get up off of a seat. And when he does, he says, it takes me five minutes to stand on my feet. This lady has a shoulder that is dislocated. She's come all the way from Canada to be delivered. This man says he's bothered with mental transfer. I said, what's that? He said, everybody reads my mind, and knows everything about me. He's mentally sick. This man is troubled, agitated, and disturbed by an unclean spirit. And here is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. He'll soon be in a mental institution. The psychiatrist has done all they can do. He's had treatments, yes. But for two years, it's getting worse. And he says, I walk along, and I just talk to myself all the time. Not only does he talk to himself, but he answers back. This brother's got to have help. But a shadow of Peter healed all that were vexed by unclean spirits. This lady has a slip disc since 1962. She's had one operation, but she cannot stoop nor bend to work. Bring me the last one. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Stand her right there. Right there. I decree that when my shadow, according to the word of God and according to the prophetic word, that the moment my shadow overcasts this little woman, way over in Nevada, that God is going to put in a new disc and let her do what she has been unable to do since 1962. Because she cannot bend, she can't stoop, and can do no work. How many believe God tonight? Amen. Do you believe it? Yes. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. Tonight. I believe him tonight. God's going to give you a new disc. Tonight. A new spine. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Step up a little closer. Thank right you. there. Thank you. Ladies, stand right there. When I step in front of her, I want every one of you to shout, Jesus! Because when I step in front of her, my shadow is going to overcast her. And she's going to stoop and bend, and God's going to give her a new spine and a new backbone. Say yes. yes! Lady, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm is ready. God going to do it? He's going to do it tonight. Say, friends? Friends? When this shadow, when this shadow overshadows me, overshadows me, God's going to give me, God's going to give me a new backbone. A new backbone. I'm going to bend. I mean again. And I'm going to stoop over. And I'm going to stoop over. Get ready. 
Are you ready to stop? Three steps, one for the father, one for the son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Jesus, show these people. Wait a minute. What's happened? Oh, my back is here. It's here. I'm here. What happened to the pain? Oh, my the pain is gone. It's gone. It's gone. Have you got a new spine? I got a new spine. Oh. Touch her toes. Look at her. Touch her toes. She couldn't be more stupid. Stand everybody and praise the Lord. so much better since I lay my burdens down. today? Yes. You believe he'll do it for you? Yes. Right now? Right. Get ready. Get the rest of these helpless people ready. We'll bring them in just a moment. How many believe God will heal her tonight? Yes. After all the Bible said in thy feet, so be it unto thee. God declared that behold I will do a new thing. God's doing it today. We, we, we don't waste God's money coming into your home with a cut and a dry program. Something is made somewhere in an office or a study. We bring you right into our campaigns where thousands of people from across the nation know these things are real. Get ready. I decree. Well, God's going to speak. God's going to speak. That when my shadow overcast you, a woman that's supposed to have been dead two years ago. God's going to raise her up. If you believe it, shout yes. yes. Shout yes. yes. Do you see my shadow? It's not a very big shadow. God said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. And this gift of prophecy said, it shall not be the shadow of a man. It shall be the shadow of myself. Now, some of you may say, who may be skeptics or unbelievers or just, you know, just cold nominal church members say, Alan, do you believe that? If you don't, uh, you can turn your channel to another number. There's another number on there. Turn it. We leave your living room the moment you turn to another channel. But you wouldn't turn for anything in the world. And you're going to watch this next Sunday. And more than that, you're going to write me a letter and you're going to put a check of appreciation in and say, Brother Allen, I appreciate the fact that you've got enough, what do they call it, intestinal fortitude to preach the gospel from Genesis to Revelation. And here is our check or our gift for the support of the Allen Revival Telecast. I'll be looking for your letter. Our mailing address is the Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. And if you forget the town, just put A.A. A. Allen. Everybody in the nation knows me. <laughs> Are you ready? When my shadow overcasts her, I want every one of you, because listen, there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Shout it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. Get ready. Lady, I believe it. Oh, God. Three steps, one 
for the father. One for the son. And one for the Holy Ghost. Watch out. She almost fell, but she's staying up. Yes, help her. She's weak. Been so long since she could walk. How many believe God has done something for this little lady? Raise your hands and rejoice in God. Rejoicing. Hallelujah. 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 Raise your hands and rejoice in God. Amen. Now listen, friends. Our God is a miracle worker. But before we leave this channel today, remember, we'll be right back in your home again next week over the same channel, provided you are faithful with your letters and your gifts of appreciation. But since I can't bring a shadow into your home on television, I can bring this. Now, every one of you that are sick and diseased and afflicted, if you will just put your hand on the TV screen, just place it on this Bible. I'm going to pray. Every person in this auditorium are going to join me in prayer. And when we pray, something is going to happen. If you're sick and diseased and afflicted and need and have faith to believe that this is God's method to come into your home today, as it was in Bible days, write me. And in your letter, tell me your sickness, disease, or infirmity, and ask for a miracle miniature handkerchief. If you need more faith to believe God in your home, this book has brought healing to untold multitudes. It is titled, God will heal you. It's yours for your letter this week. But now, you believe God will do it now? Everybody stand. And everybody in this summer camp meeting are going to join me in prayer for the next 15 seconds. And we're going to believe God to touch you as you touch this Bible in faith. Are you ready? Father God, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand upon the sick and the suffering of the dying. Bring deliverance and healing and a miracle to Almighty God, who in faith lay their hands on the Word of God this very moment, in the name of Jesus. Address your letters, telegrams, and prayer requests to Evangelist A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona. Your generous letter is needed today. Don't forget, his mailing address is Evangelist A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.